Questions 11 through 16. Listen to part of a discussion in a botany class. The class is talking about flowers. In a perfect idealized flower, its four organs are arranged in four whorls, all attached to the receptacle at the end of the stem. Before we go on, let's quickly go over the four parts of the flower. First, let's start from the outside and work in. Which organ is on the outside, closest to the stem? The sepal. That's the part that kind of looks like a leaf because it's usually green. The sepal protects the flower bud before it opens up. Right. Then what comes next? The petals, the colorful part of the flower. It's the petals that make the flower attractive to insects and birds and people, too. Right. And inside the petal layers, we have... The flower's reproductive parts, the stamens and carpels. That's right. So we have the four parts of a flower. Sepals... Petals, stamens, and carpels. Now, during the millions of years in the history of flowering plants, numerous variations evolved. In certain flowers, one or more of the four basic floral organs, sepals, petals, stamens, and carpels, have been eliminated. Plant biologists distinguish between complete flowers, those with all four organs, and incomplete flowers, those lacking one or more of the four floral parts. For example, most grasses have incomplete flowers that lack petals. There are many variations in the size, shape, and color of flowers. One important element in plant classification is the arrangement of flowers on their stalks. The large composite family, for example, which includes asters, daisies, and sunflowers, have flower heads that form a central disc. What appears to be a single flower is actually a collection of hundreds of flowers. The central disc consists of tiny, complete flowers, and what appear to be petals surrounding the central disc are actually imperfect flowers called ray flowers. I'm not sure I got that. Could you say that again? Sure. The flower head, the center part of the plant, actually consists of many tiny, tightly packed, complete flowers that stand upright on a flat disc. The whole arrangement looks like a single symmetrical flower, but it's actually a collection of hundreds of separate flowers. The petals, what look like petals, are actually larger flowers called rays that extend from the rim of the disc. Does that help? Uh, yeah, I guess so. What you're saying is, a single sunflower is really hundreds of flowers put together. That's right. This will make more sense in the lab this afternoon. So, in the composite family, there are about 19,000 different species worldwide. Many are grown as ornamentals, cosmos, zinnia, dahlia, marigold, and aster. Probably the most recognized composite flower is the English daisy. The daisy was introduced from Europe and now is a wildflower found on lawns, in fields, and at roadsides throughout North America. The name of the daisy has an interesting origin. The word daisy means day's eye and comes from an older Anglo-Saxon word. The English daisy folds up his rays at night and unfolds them again at dawn, the eye of the day, or day's eye. Several cultivated varieties of English daisy are popular as edging plants or in rock gardens. The English daisy comes in lots of colors, rose, lavender, pink, and white. It has a long bloom time from April to September. The plants are compact and attractive with flower heads up to two inches across. In the lab, we'll be looking at some different varieties of the daisy and you'll see for yourself why they're so popular. Number 11. What aspects of flowers does the class mainly discuss? Number 12. Which part of the flower attracts insects and birds? Number 13. Listen again to part of the discussion, then answer the question. The whole arrangement looks like a single symmetrical flower, but it's actually a collection of hundreds of separate flowers. The petals, what look like petals, are actually larger flowers called rays that extend from the rim of the disc. Does that help? Uh, yeah, I guess so. 
What you're saying is a single sunflower is really hundreds of flowers put together. That's right. This will make more sense in the lab this afternoon. Why does the professor say this? This will make more sense in the lab this afternoon. Number 14. Select the drawing that is most likely a member of the composite family. Number 15. Based on the information in the discussion, indicate whether each statement below is true or not true. Number 16. According to the professor, how did the daisy get its name? 